guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm gonna be getting ready, putting new makeup on my face. Well, some of it's new, some of it's rediscovered. I actually am getting ready to film a project pan video right after this one. So I'm gonna use some of the products I have for that and then some products that I haven't used on camera before. I know I'm on a no buy, so you guys are gonna be like, Melissa, how do you have new products? Well, check out my last um, Mommy Monday it was the one where it was like a day in the life of me and my baby. I ended up swapping out some products at Sephora and like exchanging them for new products because I didn't like the old ones. So that is how I got new products. But I wanted to be chatty in this video because I feel like I haven't done like a chatty get ready with me type video. But I wanted to figure out, okay, how can I film without talking about my baby the whole time? Because I feel like that's all I ever want to talk about, which is fine. But I also want to do like makeup focused videos. So I figured in today's video, I could do, there's this new tag I've seen going around called the beauty consumer tag that a lot of my favorite YouTubers have participated in. So I figured that I can do that one. It's basically about like how much money you spend on makeup in a year and just like, I don't know, some, some kind of like juicy questions. So let's hop into it. By the way, if I forget to mention a product that I'm using on my face, I am gonna list every product that I use in the description box down below in the order that I use them, so just check out my description box. Okay, let's start by priming my face. I did get this in the mail um, from Clarence. They sent it to me to review. It is their new Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch Primer. And the description of this reminded me a ton of the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. So I was like, I'm gonna test that out. And then this is something that's in my project pan. So instead of talking about the products, <laughs> let's get into the first question. Ooh. This actually feels really nice. Ooh, really smooth. It's almost like a moisturizer, like primer hybrid. Okay, so the first question is, how much do you spend on makeup a month, question mark, a year, question mark? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this year is going to be totally different. This year I am doing a low buy, no buy where my goal is to only buy one product a month, one beauty related product a month. So that incorporates makeup, hair care, skin care, bath stuff, all of the beauty related stuff. I'm only buying one thing per month, which is huge for me, you guys. I can't even remember the last time I limited myself to just one thing per month. Actually, I can remember. Back, probably before I met Matt, um, I lived by myself in an apartment. I wasn't making a ton of money, but I paid for everything all on my own. And it was right after college, so I already had a bunch of student debt that I had accrued. And then I, I just, I barely was making ends meet being able to buy just the necessities for life, you know, paying my bills and buying food and dog food and stuff like that for Lola. And so at that point in my life, I only bought like the true necessities. I really, really did not buy a whole lot more than that. And when I did, I would typically have to put it on a credit card and then slowly pay it off. And so that was probably the last time of my life where I really truly limited myself to buying only one thing, you know, when I needed to. Last year, and I haven't gone through and like added up how much I have spent on everything. I feel like that would just make me cry. <laughs> but I will say for the last several years, I have been Sephora VIB Rouge. So if you are aware of what that means, um, you have to spend $1,000 a year, like in a calendar year, in order to be considered VIB Rouge. And typically I meet that like twice over, three times over. Like it's, it's, it's bad. Um, and then I also have been um, diamond or platinum. I think before it was platinum, now they have like a diamond tier which is even higher at Ulta. So before it was like you had to spend I think $400 in order to be like platinum or whatever. And then now it's $1,200 in order to be diamond or the top tier. And I met, I met that last year also at Ulta. So needless to say, it is thousands of dollars and it is a bit ridiculous. So that is one of the reasons why I have cut back in this year. I'm only buying one thing per month. Okay, the next question is, do you ever feel guilty about how much money you spend on makeup? Oh shoot, I just put a blush brush in, in my under eye setting powder. Uh, yeah, I feel guilty about it all the time because there's so many other things I could be doing 
with that money and or buying with that money. I could donate that money. I could, you know, save that money for my retirement. I could, <laughs> there's so many other things I could be doing with that money. So that's another one of the reasons why I have cut back. I think honestly having a child truly changes your mindset. And in my mind, I now think like, oh, I could be using that money to buy something for my baby or something like that. So that is one of the reasons why I decided to change my spending habits this year. Next question is, do you get FOMO related to makeup releases? Absolutely. <laughs> I am what I like to call a marketing company's dream. I fall for marketing so easily and I'm aware of it. Like, it's not like they're being sneaky. Like, I'm aware of the fact that I fall for the limited edition thing exactly like they want me to basically if I know something is limited edition it makes me want to buy it that much more but I also realized that labeling something as limited edition is also a very it's a marketing tactic and you guys have probably realized that a lot of the times companies will say something is limited edition and then like a year later six months later it comes they like re-release it and they're like oh you guys liked it so much that we made more and it's like you plan on making more all along all right i went ahead and did my brows off camera in case you're wondering like wow where did those brows come from i use the anastasia brow Wiz, by the way and then for eyes this is my january purchase this is the huda beauty nude palette i bought this for my sister for christmas and i have to say I wanted to keep it for myself so stinking bad, but I didn't. I gave it to my sister, um, and then this is this is what I bought for myself this month. So this is the light version. She has three versions of it. There's light, medium, and deep or something like that, or rich. I don't know. They're, they're all really beautiful, uh, but this is the one I bought. So I don't know. I just really love like these peachy colors and purples, and a lot of them spoke to me. So anyways, let's move on to the next question, which is do you purchase, do you purchase or keep... I, do you purchase or keep items simply because they are limited edition? Wait a minute, did I combine those two questions together? I think I did. The last question was, do you get FOMO related to makeup releases? Yes, I do. I definitely get FOMO. Um, I wanna buy the products, I wanna be the first to review it, I wanna be the first to get my hands on it. And if something sells out or if companies say like selling out, it makes me wanna buy them even more. I'll just be honest with you. And then the second question about, or sorry, the fourth question about do you keep items simply because they're limited edition? I do. Um, that's the consumer part of me that, you know, wants to buy the limited edition stuff and then doesn't ever want to get rid of it. For example, the Hourglass uh, palettes, the Hourglass holiday palettes from like a year ago, two years ago, um, are limited edition. They're not available anymore. I don't use them on camera very much because I know that you guys can't get them, but I use it so much in my everyday today, like day-to-day -day makeup because I just love the products. So I definitely am reluctant to get rid of limited edition stuff. There's a part of me that's like, why are you keeping it? And there's a part of me that's like, you fought to buy that because sometimes you have to like, you know, fight through online queues and be there right when th something goes on sale and click it before it sells out and all that stuff. You spent your hard earned money on it, so definitely keep it and use it. So I don't know, it's like a toss up. I'm really liking this pink color, by the way, in this palette. I'm using this matte pink here up in the corner. and I really like it. It's just like a nice, it has a nice undertone. Okay, the next question is, would you be willing to pay more money for a sold out product online? So I think this is meaning like if something was sold out, would you spend more money to buy it like on eBay or Poshmark or things like that? Uh, no, I've never done that before. I, I kind of, in my mind, I think like, oh, well, if it sells out, if I don't get to it, then it wasn't meant to be. I don't need the product. And I didn't always have that mentality. There's been many times where I've been very, very tempted to purchase sold out. Gosh, this has a lot of fallout. I don't know if you guys can see it's all over my cheeks. Um, where I've been very, very tempted to purchase um, sold out products on things like eBay, but I, I never have, and I don't think I ever will. In the end, at the end of the day, like it's just makeup. More than likely, there's another product out there that's very similar to that one, texture wise, color wise, whatever it may be. And also, like I stated before, a lot of companies say something is limited edition and then 
they re-release it later on anyway, so it's kind of like just wait, you know, just wait and see. Next question is, do you wish you could spend more or spend less? I don't really like this question because I feel like it's trying to dig at the fact of like, I just, I feel like it's very telling of people's financial situations. And so I just, I don't, I don't necessarily like this question, but I'm going to answer it anyways. And I think there, there's a part of me that can answer either way. So of course, I always want to spend more. I want to be able to buy all the new makeup. If I could have every single new product at my fingertips to play with, to review, to look at, to swatch, to collect, to take pictures of, to show off on my channel or my Instagram, I would love that. I would. But the reality is, if I did that, I would have so much stinking makeup. Like, I already have too much makeup. But if I had every single new release and I had to purchase every single new release myself instead of getting it through PR, like, I would just have, it would just be too much. It would be just too overwhelming. So there is a part of me that wants to be able to spend more, wants to be able to buy every single thing that I want all the time, always. But then there's another part of me that is telling me to go on this no buy, low buy because I already have so much and I don't want things to go to waste and I do need to spend my money on other things. So I think it's like a catch 22 and I could answer it either way. Ooh, this purple color though. How fun is that? Okay, next question is, do you feel compelled to buy something when you see it in someone else's collection? I think it depends on the person, if I'm being honest. Um, it does definitely make me think about purchasing it. Like, so if I'm watching a YouTube video of somebody, either somebody that I always watch and I like and I love and I trust, or, you know, maybe I stumble upon a new video, a new person I've never seen before, and they mention a product. If they mention a product that I've kind of had my eye on and I've passed on it, It'll definitely make me question why I passed on it. Like, well, if they like it, maybe I'll like it. Um, and there has definitely been cases where people have talked about products that I was dead set in my mind that I wouldn't like, but because they have talked about it and they like it, I change my mind and I end up buying it. And sometimes I do really like the product and sometimes I really don't like the product. I remember very specifically there was a Bare Minerals product. Um, it was like the two-sided duo product where one side was like an illuminating setting powder and the other side was a matte setting powder. And I remember seeing it released and I was like, hmm that kind of appeals to me because it, it kind of was reminiscent of Hourglass products which I absolutely love. So I was like, gosh, you know, but then I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I want to get it. I'm going to pass. I don't need it. And then a couple of days later, I watched a sponsored video by Nicole Guerrero. I remember exactly who it was and exactly when it happened. And I know it was sponsored because she disclosed that it was sponsored. So it's fine. But the video was completely around this product that I had already in my mind decided I didn't want. And I was like, God, she really seems to like that product. And so I remember I went to Sephora like that next day on the way home from work and I bought the product. And guess what? It stayed in the box. I never used it. I might have used it once in a video um, in like a testing out new products video. But then I put it back in the box and I would never take it out of the box. And I ended up decluttering it and that product was a total waste of money. And I should have listened to my gut and I should have just not purchased it. So I am definitely getting better at listening to myself and I'm also getting better at understanding sponsored videos. I do also think that we have to remember that the reason why marketing like YouTube, direct marketing and things like Yelp review sites and Google reviews and stuff like that, the entire purpose of things like this is so people can recommend or not recommend products and services that work for them or don't work for them and so a lot of the time like I don't know you just have to use your better judgment and like realize like okay are they just saying this just because or like is this a genuine review that question also kind of brings me back to a time in my life when you know think of like elementary school or even high school when you would see the cool kids wearing something and like you wanted to wear what they wore or if they were wearing a certain brand or a certain type of t-shirt or 
I mean, that is just literally how marketing works is you see somebody else wearing it, somebody that you look up to or envy, or maybe you don't look up to them or envy them, but you see something that they're wearing or using and it works for them. Therefore, you are, you want to do it too. You want to buy it too. You want to wear it too. And so that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's just literally how marketing works. I don't know. Okay, I'm done with this question. <laughs> Okay, next question is, do you buy more during the holidays? I think I do, actually. So holiday releases always get me excited. And it kind of brings me back to a time, like pre-YouTube days, when makeup companies would really focus on releasing items seasonally. So they would do, you know, spring releases, summer releases, fall releases, and then holiday releases usually. And so it kind of brings me back to those days when, you know, companies would release their holiday collection and that was the first time they had released products in a few months. And so it would get me really excited and therefore I would buy the products. I think the, the issue now touching back on some of the previous questions is a lot of holiday releases are a limited edition. Um, in fact, most holiday releases are limited edition. And so um, it kind of brings us back to that question about limited edition products. But I don't know. I think also a lot of the companies will time their sales around holiday time. So like Sephora, for example, does their holiday 20% off sale in November. Um, and then Ulta usually times their 20% off sale relatively around the same time. And then you think about like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of the companies will usually have some sort of sale on their direct website. And so it just becomes this, this culture of like, let's put things on sale so that people buy them. And sometimes I fall for it and sometimes I don't. I think I'm getting better about not buying things just because they're on sale. <laughs> I would rather buy things that I like and are on sale, you know what I mean? I'm loving this Milk Makeup Blur Stick, or what is it called? Not Blur Stick, Matte Bronzer, Stick Bronzer. I am not a huge fan of cream products, uh, but I really, really, I'm digging this. Okay, next question is, have you ever hidden a makeup purchase from family or friends? Yeah, I have. I don't want to say it's because I'm ashamed because it's my money. You know, I can purchase what I want with my money. It is what it is. You know what I mean? But I sometimes just don't want to have to explain or I didn't want to have to explain. Um, but it's been a very long time since I've had to do something like that or I've found the need to do something like that. This blush is really pretty, by the way. It's the Charlotte Tilbury sex on fire but it is just like a beautiful kind of like movie nude loving it okay next question is do you have more than 10 products in your collection that you have not used in over a month uh yeah and i think most people that film youtube videos can say yes to this prop to this question there's no way even if i did my makeup every day even if i did my makeup twice a day there's no way i would use every single blush in my collection every single month. Like there just isn't. But that's because of the size of my collection, which is pretty telling. I know, I, I always think back to the time of my life when all I had was my little makeup bag in front of my mirror and like all that I had like one or two blushes, one or two eyeliners, one or two mascaras, like, and that was it. And like such simpler times, you know what I mean? Next question is, have you ever been pressured to purchase something you could not afford or did not need? Um, I think the not afford thing, I've been lucky enough to have a really, you know, good paying job, uh, spending my money wisely, things like that, to where if I really, really, really want something, um, I will purchase it. I do, th I do put a limit on myself. Um, so I remember once there was, this is really hard to do. Jeffree Star, I remember once, was talking about, I think it was Burberry brushes, and I remember thinking like, oh my god, I need these makeup brushes, and I looked them up online, and they were like $100 a brush, which is insane, 
And I was like, I can't do that. That's ridiculous. I'm not doing it. Now, have I spent $100 on a makeup brush before? I sure have. I bought the Tom Ford brush that was very, like, shedding, by the way. I don't know if you noticed when I was blending out that bronzer, it was shedding everywhere. I ended up having to use a different brush. So, but... I do put limits on myself. I do. I also feel like I have a different... Let me rewind. I had a different expectation in my head about how much money should or how much money makeup should cost like in my mind you know $50 for a makeup palette doesn't seem like a whole lot of money but then I think about $50 is a lot of money like you could do a lot with $50 you could buy groceries for a week for your family or you know fill up your gas tank twice or you know there's that's half of my phone bill and there's a lot of stuff and it's just like, in my mind, I kind of, I don't know, I was able to justify the expense for some reason for certain things. Now, this year, of course, things are a lot different and I'm thinking about things a little bit differently. I really like the color of this lip pencil. I don't know that it goes very well with like the purple eyes, but it's really nice. It's Charlotte Tilbury Love Trap, by the way. And then the lipstick I'm gonna use is Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk Diamonds. Um, okay, next question is, do you purchase makeup for collector reasons? I definitely have done that. Um, I have definitely completed sets of things just because I want every single thing in that set. So for example, these Too Faced blushes, which I don't even think are available anymore. I remember I had bought one or two because I liked the color. And then I ended up really just liking the packaging and I wanted to have the whole collection. And so I ended up buying the whole collection, every single color, even though realistically some of these colors are not gonna work well on my skin tone. So for example, like Your Love is King, this is not gonna work well on my skin tone. Oh, just dropped my phone on the floor. This is not gonna work well for my skin tone. It's way too dark. You know, why did I need to buy this? Well, I needed the whole collection of things. But I have definitely changed my mentality. I do not do that anymore, but I definitely used to do that. I know this sounds weird, but this lipstick kind of tastes good. It has like a vanilla. Is that weird? It's a little weird. Okay, very last question is, in your makeup journey, have you become less or more consumeristic? I think for a while I became very much so more consumeristic, especially when I was first starting my makeup channel. And I think that was just kind of the trend back in the day was having these huge makeup collections. And it came from seeing other people having huge makeup collections. So it's like, well, if all these people became so successful on YouTube, by simply having large makeup collections, you know, in my mind, that's what I thought. Well, then I need a large makeup collection. And so I fell into the trap of all of this wanting to build my channel, feeling like I needed everything, feeling like I needed a huge collection. And I became very consumeristic. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm a marketing person's dream. I fall for marketing traps all the time. But I think as I get older, as my priorities change, as things change, my mind totally has shifted and I try to be much more aware of it now and I'm not as consumeristic as I used to be. Do I still fall into traps? Of course I do. I'm only human. I'm a girl. I love my makeup. I love my things. Um, but I'm definitely getting a lot better at it and I think having this low buy, no buy is definitely going to help me to become very much so less consumeristic. Alright guys, well you can see the sun has definitely shifted because this line that my blinds is <laughs> casting has moved throughout this video, but that is the end of this, um, tag video. I hope that you guys like this. If you want to participate, I will link the questions down below for you guys so you can maybe do it on your own channel or just answer them to yourself. But I hope that this was kind of a fun way of doing a tutorial get ready with you type thing. And I will talk to you next time. Mwah!